This is Mail Report Accounting Software from FP. It's nice and simple to import the data from your existing Karat UK software. All you need to do is go to Mail Report and then the Karat UK importer. Once that loads, you get a list of options as shown here. I'm going to stick to the default options. You also have the possibility to import the transactions as well from the Correct UK data. If you've chosen the option to import the transactions, it will also do that at the same time. I've got some duplicates in my data, so I'm just going to choose next here. Once that's done, you get a summary of what's been imported. Then just simply choose Finish. It really couldn't be simpler connecting the centre mail. Just choose Settings and then choose the Postage Meters option. Now all you need to do is click Detect. Then you would frank an item of mail through the centre mail and the software will automatically pick that franking machine up. So we have the franking machine automatically detected on COM port 1. Just going to choose save here. Now of course the centre mail is capable of reporting on up to five different carriers. Um, so we're going to set those up now. We're going to click the minus sign next to first class special delivery and overseas mail here and then choose the big plus sign on the right hand side of this box to add another carrier. OK, of course you can add any name into this field here, for example carrier or whatever the carrier is called. We're going to add TNT, so I'm going to type TNT in here, add the account number, and then of course add TNT's website address. OK, just before we save here, I need to add some of the TNT types of mail. Um, those will be, for example, letter, large letter, small packets. We can simply add those just by clicking the plus sign to the left of the dialog box, typing in the name of the service, and just making sure that the product has its own unique ID. We're just going through from uh, 0, 1 and 2 here. And when you're done, just simply choose Save. OK, Mail Report has unlimited accounting with three different sub-levels. This could mean that you could monitor three individual people within that department if you wanted to. Alternatively, of course, you can just use the accounts within Mail Report in the traditional way. But of course, it is nice to have the option. Now, importing accounts couldn't be easier. As an example, I'm going to open a CSV file here that I've created some accounts in. So if I just choose Import and then locate the file which I have, which I've conveniently put on my desktop, let's open that up and uh, Mail Report automatically recognises the account structure that I've set up there. So it's account number first and then of course the account name. It can import data from various um, delimited formats. Uh, once I'm happy with that, just choose Next. Now, of course, uh, Mail Report offers me uh, a lot of information here, but I've only got the account number and the account set up at the moment. So I'm going to untick these boxes, just making sure I've got the first two highlighted. Once I'm happy with that, just choose Next, and I will confirm the import, and then just choose Save. It's going to tell me that I've already got some of these accounts set up, but uh, that's not a problem. I'm just going to ignore those and choose OK. Now, of course, accounts can be imported from any XML or CSV file, and uh, that may include a lot of the accounting packages that are out there currently. Deleting accounts uh, that you no longer use is also easy, just by using the clear and delete buttons at the bottom of the page. So first of all, we bring up the list of accounts that we have, just by using the search index grid. Now I know that I've got some accounts that begin with the letter T, so we'll choose that. And here we have all my test accounts. I'm not afraid to delete those, so we can highlight one of those and just choose Delete at the bottom.
One of the great things about MailReport is that it can scan barcodes into the system, um, which will automatically change the accounts. You can create a barcode um, from any of the accounts that you've got within MailReport, and I'll show you how here. So I'm just going to create a new account. Then I'm going to save that to the system. OK, now we've created our barcode account. All I'm going to do now is highlight that and then choose the option Scan Codes. This brings up the Scan Codes dialog box. So what I need to do now is give my scan code a name. Now this name has to be in capital letters, so we're just going to type in barcode account here. I'm going to drop it down and choose my newly created barcode account so that it nicely matches and then just choose Save. As you can see, my scan code has been created. Now what we need to do is create a barcode from my newly created barcode account. And of course you can call that account anything you choose, it doesn't have to be called barcode account. So I'm just going to choose this option account barcodes here. Now the system's already picked up that I've created a scan code and here's the barcode that matches that. And now all I need to do is print that to a printer. And talking of printers, let's set up the print on it. This is pretty standard stuff for any piece of software. Uh, you just choose the printer option drop the box down, choose your preferences, and then of course just choose Save. One of the great things about MailReport is its administrator mode. Now say for example you had a post room manager who used the system but also wanted his staff to use it. Uh, the post room manager may not want his staff to use various options within the software. Well this could be restricted by using administrator mode. So we've set up our administrator, typed in the password. Now what we're going to do is just close the software and reopen it just to see the changes. So as we can see how a non-administrator only has the option to capture data from the franking machine, generate a report or hit the administrator button to log back on as an administrator. One of the most important things about running software like this is obviously backing up the data. You want to make sure the data is not only secure on the local system, but that maybe your accounts department also has access to that data. Luckily, MailReport does that automatically for you. All you need to do is choose the Data Backup Destination Path. Now I've chosen a network path here, which makes it easy for the accounts department to then pick that data up and start analysing it. Anyone that works in a post room will probably tell you that using a PC in conjunction with ranking machine software can sometimes be a little bit of a hassle. Well, not the case with MailReport because once you tick the pre-selection box here, you can then use the franking machine completely and the software will pick up every transaction, every account change for you, which makes it so much easier for the staff that process the post. What I'm going to show you here is the MailReport software just capturing center mail postage data in real time. I've chosen my account FP Test 3 and I'm going to process some posts through the center mail. Unfortunately you can't see that happening but you will see the data being recorded on the screen in real time. Once we start processing the post we're capturing a lot of information here. We're capturing the carrier of course, the product, destination, the postage, the weight, dimensions, all linked to that account and ready to be processed, analysed and reported on later on. Now of course we all make mistakes. There is a useful tool within MailReport though to deal with that. It's called rebooking. So for example if you've just processed data onto one particular account that was supposed to go onto another account, well then all we need to do is just rebook that data. So I searched for all of today's transactions and we can see those here on the right hand side. I'm just going to edit one of those transactions by highlighting it and then choosing the edit button at the bottom of the screen here. That brings up the edit transaction details box. All I need to do is drop down the accounts box here to where I want the data to be rebooked and then all I need to do is choose selected. 
That's great, and now the data's been rebooked. If there's a lot of data that needs to be rebooked, well, I don't have to do this one by one. What I can do is rebook batches of data. So I'm going to select all of this data here, choose Edit, choose the target account where I want this data rebooked, and this time I'm going to choose All, and it will rebook all of this data from my FP Test 3 account to the master account shown here. The reporting capabilities in MailReport are vast, so I'm not going to be able to show you them all here, uh, but at least I can give you an overview. The first thing we have a look at is the list of accounts. Now, of course, you can print this list of accounts if you needed to and put it on the wall so that you can reference those at any time. Some of the easiest reports to get from MailReport will be the summary reports. They just give you an overall summary of the account's data daily, monthly, weekly, whatever you need, but also MailReport has the capabilities of creating detailed transaction reports for each account. So I've just selected some criteria here for one of my summary reports. I'm going to summarise my raw mail data, and I'm just going to choose Preview here to get a look at that. Now that's summarising which accounts have used which particular carriers on this report. Other types of summary report may be, of course, that you want to see all of the accounts that have franked data using Royal Mail uh, as the carrier. Of course, alternatively, you might just want a summary report that shows you which accounts have used first-class data, for example. And that's one of the reports we'll have a look at next. Now, of course, in this report, there's quite a bit more information that we need to look through. Um, but, of course, it depends on the type of information uh, that you or the accounts department is looking for. Let's just have a quick look here at the carrier summary. On this report, we can compare which accounts have used which services on which different carriers, uh, Royal Mail or TNT in this case. One of the other types of report that we've got is a, a graphical representation within Mail Report. This makes things a little bit easier if you're trying to present some data to the accounts department. I've chosen to select the data over a four month period here for comparison. One of the other graphical reports we can get is obviously the postage spend. This allows me to see easily what the most popular mail class is. In my fictitious data here, it seems to be first class. Of course, we can also just view the text behind that graphical data. Once we're happy with the criteria we've selected, we can then save that data to anywhere we like. This then, of course, allows you to save that graphical representation of the data, or even the text, into PowerPoint for a presentation to the Accounts Department. Well, I hope you found this short tutorial useful. Of course, for more information, you can always visit FP Mailing's website at www.fpmailing.co.uk.